good morning and welcome everybody. We're excited to have many, many wonderful people here on behalf of the Macomb County Chamber. We appreciate the Chamber hosting this morning's event. Thanks, Chamber. Let's give them a round of applause. I am Amy Person. I represent First State Bank. We're a locally owned and operated bank here in Macomb County. We've been in operation since 1917. This year we will celebrate 105 years of making wonderful things happen in Macomb County. We're especially proud to be a family owned and operated business here in Macomb Township, so thank you for having us. In addition to that, I wanted to say a few words and then I'm going to pass it along to the rest of the sponsors that have made today possible. I just wanted to point out that we're really proud of the things that make a community great um, with the work that we do at First State Bank. A couple of those really key points are helping people, especially families, um, realize the dream of home ownership, especially in communities like Macomb Township. You're a well sought after community and we're, help, we're happy to help people to realize uh, their dream of owning a home right here in our community. In addition to that, there's businesses in the room that we know quite well because we've been able to help them either establish their business, grow their business, or help their business to operate. Um, and we're really proud of that fact. And if there's someone in the room that we can help or have a conversation with, come see me and my colleagues over at table two. And then last but not least, I think the thing that's a little different about us that sets us apart is the passion that we have for those that are underserved, underprivileged, or are struggling in our communities. And today I have for you, if you have the privilege of stopping by and saying hello to my colleague Lynn, Community Care and Guide. There is a exhaustive list of over 400 agencies that provide hope, support and resources to people in our community. But not only that, if any of you have a passion for volunteering or for telling the story about nonprofit organizations that you're involved with as leaders, we'd love for you to pick up one of these guides and share this because we think it's a great resource for those that are willing and able to help um, make Macomb County a better place to live and work. So without further ado, I'd like to thank the additional sponsors today's event. It wouldn't be possible without their commitment and their loyalty to our community. So as I call your names, please come up and you'll have the opportunity to give a brief commercial to the audience. GFL, Anderson, Eckstein and Westrick, AT&T, United Shore Baseball League, MedStar Ambulance, Henry Ford Macomb Hospital, and not represented today, but definitely here through sponsorship are Independent Bank and Beaumont Health. And we're going to start with GFL this morning. Come on over. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Joe Munum with GFL Environmental, and as I was driving up North Avenue today, I noticed on either side of the road, just green cart after green cart, and that's as close as I'm ever going to get to walking the red carpet. <laughs> so, in fact, it's sort of hard to miss all of our green trucks, green carts, because we are the largest municipal waste hauler in Metro Detroit. We pick up over 1 million homes each and every week just in this area. We, are, uh, we serve residential and commercial, so if you have any commercial needs, please see our booth before you leave. We're fully integrated. We have, um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, municipal, um, um, solid waste, recycling, and our own compost facilities. We're the only company in this area that has all three of that. So we're dedicated to making sure that wherever we can improve the environment, we're doing so. Hence our name, Green for Life. Thank you very much, and we're very proud to be able to uh, serve Macomb Township. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, similar to Joe, I didn't really see the green trucks, but I saw a lot of the orange construction cones on the way here, and that's that. We love those cones, and 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 we ask, being in the the engineering construction area, we ask that everybody be safe around the construction zones and pay attention to the workers. But good morning. My name is Steve Pangori. I'm president of Anderson, Eckstein, and Westrick. We're a civil engineering, surveying, and architectural firm located in Shelby Township. And we're very proud to have been the township's municipal engineers for the past nine years. I want to take just a real quick minute to commend Supervisor 
Viviano, Clerk Posey, Treasurer Droulette, and Trustees Cusimano, Oliver, Lucido, and Nevers for their leadership in this township. And a quick shout out to all the department heads for keeping the township running on a, on a day to day basis uh, as a fine tuned machine. Uh, we, we have been um, very pleased to be part of the team that um, is working toward uh, keeping the township operating uh, in, in a wonderful place to, to live and work for all of the businesses and residents within the community. And you know, once again, we look forward to continuing to work for Macomb Township uh, for years to come. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Greg Jacob from Henry Ford Macomb Hospital. We're glad to be a sponsor again this year, and we're looking forward to lots of good news from Supervisor Viviano. Um, and there's good news at Henry Ford, too. We are now Henry Ford Health. That is our new brand that was launched about a month ago. You'll see it on our signage. You'll see uh, ads. Uh, our We Are Henry campaign on uh, uh, TV and other social media and so forth. And uh, it's all about uh, making the impossible possible. That's what we do at Henry Ford. And we want people to know that, and that's, that's the new brand is carrying that message. Um, this is also hospital week. It's nurses week. And uh, we are celebrating that and celebrating the contribution that our, our workers, our frontline workers, make to the community every day uh, fighting COVID, and we're still fighting it. Unfortunately, it's, it may be coming back, so we're cautioning everyone to, to watch that and, and get a booster if, if, that's, uh, if that works for you. Um, but our, um, uh, you know, when you talk about making the impossible possible, our staff does that every day, and they inspire us and lift us up and, and, and keep us going and moving forward uh, through all the challenges. Um, another example of making the impossible possible is our North Tower project in, in Clinton Township. That hospital is growing. We are building a five-story addition that will be open in about a year. And uh, it, we started that. It's a $318 million expansion. We started it during the pandemic, and it is on schedule. So we're very proud of that. And it will offer all private rooms when it is open in about a year. And out in this area, our urgent care in Chesterfield is now Henry Ford Go Health Urgent Care. That's a partnership we recently launched to uh, expand our urgent care presence in Southeast Michigan. And uh, there will be a new one opening in uh, Clinton Township this month also, as well as a few more around Southeast Michigan. Um, I'll end it there because like you, I wanna hear more about Macomb Township and uh, from uh, Supervisor Viviano. So thank you for your time. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Dan Griesbaum. I'm the vice president over at the United Shore Professional Baseball League. I uh, want to start by actually thanking a lot of you in this room. Uh, we've got a lot of tremendous support from Macomb County government businesses, uh, leaders over the last couple of years, which uh, were very difficult for our league. It was a difficult couple of years. Luckily for me, I work for a, an eternal optimist by the name of Andy Appleby, and uh, he really kept us going, and with a lot of your support, we kept going, and we're very much alive and well right now. Uh, I'm very excited for this season. We actually open up a week from Friday, so May 20th is opening night. We'll have fireworks as we do every Friday, and we would love to see all of you out at the ballpark there. A lot of exciting things happening this year. We're actually uh, off to a great start as far as our sales go, so if you have any interest in possibly having an outing of any sort over at our ballpark, please see my friend Owen, who is at the table over there today, and uh, you know, let him know if you have interest in any particular dates, because it, it is going very well, and we're actually starting to run out of options during you know, certain times a year, uh, which is a wonderful change uh, from the last couple of years for us. Uh, we have some really exciting promotions coming up as well, just to name a couple of them for you. Uh, some fun stuff, especially for me being a child of the 80s, I'm excited about uh, Top Gun Night, which is coming up on May 21st. Uh, in celebration of that of that sequel coming out, uh, a couple other big ones. We have Jimmy Buffett night, as we as we always do. Uh, we have a Star Wars night this year. We have a Ted Lasso promotion this year, which is fun for those who like that show. Um, 
as always, a first responder night, a firefighter's night. I could go on and on about the promotions. There's, there's something special almost every night uh, down at Jimmy John's Field. But we'd love to see all of you down there. Again, thanks so much for the support the last couple of years. Really excited for, uh, for next Friday and hope to see all of you at the ballpark. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good morning. My name is Rita Elias, and actually we're here from AT&T. Um, I've been in Macomb Township all my life, actually, for the past 30 years. I actually run and manage four AT&T stores and um, in Macomb Township, New Baltimore. Gross Point Woods actually is not Macomb Township, but we are reopening an AT&T store in 21 in Gratiot. And we're just thanking you for our support, uh, nurses, you know, um, the hospitals, first responders, police officers. We specialize in, in everything AT&T for your services, TV, Internet. And this actual month is actually appreciation offers for first responders, uh, the medical employees. And as, as they spoke earlier, we appreciate and thank you for all you do. Um, we do have some specials and promotions. Uh, just letting you know that we're in the areas. Please visit your stores. And uh, I appreciate everything you guys have done for me and, and being in my businesses and my stores. So um, anything you guys need, first responders, please visit our stores and, and let us know anything that you guys need. Thank you so much. Good morning. My name is Susan Burkhardt from MedStar Ambulance, and it's so nice to be here in person with all of you instead of looking at you on a telecall. We're very excited to hear the presentation of Supervisor Viviano and his team today, but I wanted to take a minute and share a couple of updates with you on MedStar. So we came through the pandemic. Um, happy to be here, happy to see as Greg shared, COVID is on the decline, but we are still seeing it a bit. Many of you only think of us as first responders, but MedStar actually provided the second largest amount of the monoclonal antibody therapy to help people recover from COVID and not need a hospital. We led three counties in COVID vaccines. We hope this year to have our workforce hit 1,000 strong as we lead into 2023, which is actually MedStar's 30th anniversary. So we're excited about that. It's a pleasure and an honor to serve the residents and the families of Macomb Township and Macomb County. Really quick though, my biggest topic is the MedStar EMT Academy. So this was a vision of our CEO, Colby Miller, and this is an eight week program. It is perfect for anybody that you know, graduating school, in the young 20s, they wanna go into healthcare, What's unique about this program, they're hired by MedStar, and as they attend classes to get certified as an EMT, they're actually paid during that time. As soon as they receive their licensure, they're given a full-time schedule and put at one of our stations enjoying a great career as an EMT with a career path that will take them forward through paramedic, they can go into critical care medicine, they can become a flight medic, the size of MedStar now allows for so many other opportunities within all of our divisions, including mobile health. So um, there's flyers available. Visit MedStarAmbulance.org. If you know somebody looking for a new career, somebody in healthcare and parents don't want to spend 100000 on tuition while they figure out what they want, please send them our way. Thanks so much, and thanks, Kelly, for having us. Thank you sponsors for sharing your updates. So without further ado, I'd like to recognize the leadership in this room that's here today in support of Supervisor Viviano. Please stand as I call your name if you're an elected official to be recognized. Congresswoman Lisa McLean, County Executive Mark Hackle, Public Works Commis Commissioner Candace Miller, Macomb County Clerk Anthony Forlini, Judge Douglas Shepard, Judge Terry Lynn Dennings, Harrison Township Supervisor Kenneth Verkast, Orion Township Super Supervisor Chris Barnett, Commissioner Harold Ha, and Commissioner Joe Sabatini. Let's give them all a round of applause for their service. And at this time, I'd like to welcome up Congresswoman Lisa McLean for some remarks. 
You, they told me I have three minutes. I can barely say my name in three minutes, so I'll be fast. Um, thank you all for having me today. I appreciate it. Um, I have the honor of representing this district. Um, I head back to D.C. in about um, three hour, four hours. I want to give you a little bit of an update on, on D.C. There's not a whole lot going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we are in the middle of doing some earmarks. We are trying to bring some dollars back to the community. So thank you, Macomb, for submitting your earmarks. Um, it's important to bring things back and dollars back to the communities to help them grow. In my short tenure, like 18 months in, in Congress, I've learned a lot. And a lot of what I've learned is what to do, but also what not to do and how to improve. One of the biggest things um, that I think that I have learned is don't forget where you live and don't forget who you represent. And I can thank Candace Miller for that. So she has been um, extremely helpful in guiding me on what to do and what maybe not to do. It's cute because, um, and I say it's cute because when I'm in Congress, uh, they'll say, oh, what district do you represent? And I'll say, oh, I represent the thumb of Michigan. And almost to a T, unless it's another freshman, they say, oh, Candace is old district. And I said, yep. <laughs> so I have some big shoes to fill, but I'm honored to try and fill them. Um, one of the things that I think is critical that we need to take stock in here in Macomb County that is very different that I've seen is the leadership that we have and really what makes this community I think unique is the ability to work together. I have not seen that in my travels. I have not seen communities work together like this community works with whether it's across the aisle, whether it's with different communities, you know, Oakland working with Macomb, or dare I say Democrats working with Republicans. My God, that's a bad word nowadays. But you all do that. Not perfect, but you do it very well because you have one common goal, and that is to make your community better. And, and I'll share with you, that's not going on around the state and around the nation right now. Everybody is at odds. And we are stronger when we work together. And I think, Frank, starting with you, with your leadership, I think you've done a really good job of trying to bring the community together. And we could all take a little bit of that back to Washington. I think we'd be a lot better. So with that, I'm out of time. Trust me, I could talk for hours. But thank you again. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. And thank, thank you for all of your help and support and your advice. Listen, we are truly in this together. And Macomb is flourishing. And it starts with all of you in this room. Thank you for your genuine remarks, Congresswoman. Now I'd like to welcome up somebody that we all are quite familiar with, Executive Mark Hackle. Thank you very much. Let me move this up a little bit here. Sorry. I try to I try to I try to make it. I try to make it subtle. That's a good point. <laughs> I'm glad y'all came here for the uh, State of the County Address. I'm going to seal the show. I'm going to leave about five minutes left for, for Frank here. So, and, and I think he's okay with that. But you know what? Uh, seriously, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to be here, obviously for being a county executive, but more importantly, for the opportunity to listen to what's happening in my hometown, where I actually live right now, um, Macomb Township. And I think, uh, Lisa, your, your comments are well spoken. I say that for this reason. It is an incredible turnaround that we have seen here in this township with the leadership of you three on a daily basis and the rest of this board in trying to work together to try to figure out how do we solve issues in Macomb Township. And I do see that across the entire county of Macomb. There's a lot more of that unity of trying to figure out how do we solve problems. We talk about bipartisan efforts. Well, Candace Miller and myself, I think we're kind of the, uh, if you will, the poster childs for that. We try to figure out 
Well, it's a, she, she calls it the odd couple, I call it the poster child. But when you think about it, we look at issues. What are the issues, how do we resolve them? Forget about partisan politics. It's about those issues that folks really care about um, at their dinner tables. And so with that, we try to solve those problems. So let me tell you a few of those that are happening here in Macomb County. We're very fortunate to try to figure out how do we work through those. One of those is roads. There's a lot of road projects. I think Frank may be talking about some of those. But I think for the first time ever, we're going to have a multi-five-lane road through the entire township here in Macomb at 23 Mile Road by the end of next year. That is an incredible accomplishment. It's one that's been kind of, um, I guess, well overdue. And uh, we're finally there. A couple of bridge issues, 26 Mile Road, 21 Mile Road. Uh, we know we got the Garfield issue going on. We're working through the Romeo Plank, concerned about 22 Mile Road. All those road projects we're going to get there. We're spending $80 million in county road money this year on road projects throughout the entire county. $80 million. There's going to be a lot of projects. There's over 100 projects if you combine what's going on with MDOT, with what's going on with county roads, and local uh, DPWs. So you're going to see a lot of those barrels, but as was mentioned before, uh, it's going to be a problem. You're going to be irritated by it, but it's a good thing. But still, it's not going to get us where we need. There's no question about it. We need sustainable funding to try to figure out how do we solve this problem moving into the future. It's great getting those earmarks to solve some of the bridge issues, to deal with some of these roads, but the reality is we need to find a, a funding model that's going to get us to where we're seeing roads being fixed further than they're being deteriorated around the entire county as well as throughout Southeast Michigan. Uh, we're still pushing for that. We need our legislative personalities to help us do that, to make that a reality. But more important, one of the things that's near and dear to me, we mentioned that it is uh, kind of a Nurses Week uh, starting tomorrow. It will be National Law Enforcement Officers Week, something that I am much, uh, very much uh, familiar with and connected to. Um, National Law Enforcement Officers Day happens to be May 15th coming up. But with that, there's nothing more important than public health and public safety. I think we just saw that with the pandemic, the issues we've seen that uh, have come about uh, during the pandemic dealing with law enforcement. Well, if you think about the issue that we're facing here in this county, and, and no, I don't think anybody else would uh, disagree, you'd see it everywhere, whether it's throughout the state or even throughout the country, mental health substance abuse. Well, we, treat, we keep trying to figure out how do we tackle that, how do we address that? Law enforcement, and again, even in the fire uh, services, we come across people that have these issues and we don't quite know what to do with them, how to deal with them. We try to resolve those problems, what we, where we place them. Most people, when they come in contact with law enforcement, go to a county jail, and we don't have the capabilities of handling it or dealing with it appropriately. So we have worked out with this funding that we've got from the federal government called ARP funding, that ARP funding, the American Recovery Plan, is to be spent on projects. Every municipality got it throughout the entire state, every county got this funding, and even the state got the funding. Macomb County stands to get, in fact, we've gotten our first allotment of it, $172 million. The question is, what are we going to do with that money? Is it going to be something that's going to be transactional or transformative? And fortunately, working with our uh, Board of Commissioners, Joe Sabatini and Harold Hall, happy to be here, we talked about that and realized the county has a responsibility to deal with certain issues. We can make that money transactional and go away uh, tomorrow, and there's nothing at the end that would resolve that. We have an issue with the county jail. The county jail is not the appropriate place for people that have mental health substance abuse issues. And we do believe there's a better option than confinement and that's treatment. If you talk to anybody in law enforcement, they'll tell you. We come in contact with somebody, we to bring them into the jail, and what do we do with them there? Even the judges, our judiciary, have to deal with this. So we're pretty solid here in Macomb County realizing we've got a plan. And with approximately 100 million of that uh, dollars that we're going to be seeing coming to us or that we have, we're going to be using that to transform the county jail. And what do I mean by that? A central intake and assessment is what we're looking at doing here. And I don't know that any other county is even thinking about what we're doing. When somebody gets arrested 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, they're brought to the county jail, there's an assessment that's going to be made on that individual. And if they need to be confined because they're a dangerous society, we'll keep them in that lockup. But while they're in that lockup, do we have the appropriate type of facilities to manage their care? And as we do, we need to make sure that we're having the appropriate services provided for that. So we're going to be creating a facility here in Macomb County, getting rid of some of the old portions of the county jail that don't need to be there, but making sure we're right-sizing the facility and there's going to be no cost attributed to the taxpayers. Before we talked about what are we going to do, put a millage together to fix the county jail. That's about a $300 million project we were looking at. And again, the county doesn't have the financing for that. And so with that, it would have been a millage. Well, now we have the funding to fix this problem. We're going to solve that for the first time. I think we have money to make that happen. And we got support of the county board of commissioners to at least uh, investigate or look at how much it's going to cost and how do we do it. But the most important part of that was the opioid settlement. If you remember, we sued the, uh, the manufacturers and distributors because we saw too much of the influx of opioids coming into a community. Well, we did that in Macomb County along with the city of Detroit. Myself and Mayor Duggan had a press conference, talked about it. 
Several years later, we come to find out that now there's a settlement. $1.5 million annually is coming to Macomb County for the next 18 years as a result of that settlement. So the ARP funding is going to deal with the brick and mortar and the type of facilities, but the settlement money coming for the next 18 years is going to deal with the processing and trying to figure out how do we deal with those folks and figure out where do we need to put them. So it's going to take care of the service providers dealing with those particular issues. So here in Lacombe County, one of the things that's most important to me is figuring out what are we doing with folks that have mental health and substance abuse issues moving forward and making sure we have the right type of facilities to manage their care while we're here. Now again, 172 million, 100 million of that is going toward it. Candace Miller already gobbled up 40 million for her underground issues. And again, she was the first one there with a wheelbarrow when she heard we're getting 172 million <laughs> saying, where's my dough? And so we're gonna be dumping that into her wheelbarrow and uh, making sure she takes care of those issues. But uh, the other portion of that money is the health department area uh, where we're dealing with our veteran services, making sure we're dealing with our health department. And I've got to say this, Macomb County was recognized by the state of Michigan as the veteran friendly county of the year for the service we provide to our veterans here in Macomb County, and they're 47,000 strong. So, and I do want to take some special recognition of the guy standing in the back of the room, have his own this place, and uh, he does a heck of a job. Um, I know him back when I used to play basketball in Mr. Tom's work. Um, he is the owner of this facility, and I want to thank him and his staff for the service they're providing today for this particular event. So, Tom, thank you and your staff. With that, Take the, uh, once again, I want to recognize that it is National Law Enforcement Officers Week. Uh, be kind to a law enforcement officer when you see one, uh, and make sure you thank them for their service. And uh, I'll start this because it happens to be that election season. I'm Mark Hackle, and I approve of this message. <laughs> Thanks for that thorough update. It was pretty telling. Okay, now I'd like to welcome up Public Works Commissioner Candace Miller. Thanks. Yes, I brought my wheelbarrow. Brought my wheelbarrow. Uh, good morning, everybody. I uh, just want to take a couple of minutes because we've had a lot of speakers and we want to hear from uh, our great supervisor here, Frank Viviano, about what's going on in Macomb Township. But uh, thanks, uh, Lisa. Congresswoman McLean, I call it Lisa, for those very, very nice comments. And uh, I appreciate the fact there's nothing happening in Washington, D.C. right now because uh, I've been there before. And when you're in this, uh, in election mode at this particular time, I'm just telling you, whatever party's in power, things sort of come to a screeching halt, particularly now with such a toxic environment. It's very unfortunate, but it is what it is. But I'll tell you what, if nothing's happening in Washington, it's happening at the Public Works Office. So let me give a, a quick, uh, quick, quick update we are, uh, we've said our, our mission, really our vision for this department is uh, quality of life. Water quality equals quality of life. How can we protect our water assets? And we've also said how can we be a critical component of economic prosperity? And we think about those two things all the time. And we have, and this is why I need my wheelbarrow, we have uh, about 130 million, almost 150 million dollars worth of projects that are going on right now. We almost think of ourselves as a startup company, if you want to know the truth because uh, our infrastructure, our critical underground infrastructure, was left in a not su such great condition. And uh, you all remember the sinkhole on 15 Mile Road? Well, after we did our inspection there, no surprise, we've got all kinds of issues with that interceptor. So we have a huge project going on at 15 Mile across from the high school at the ITC corridor in Sterling Heights. We have another project going on in 15 Mile by Garfield. We have <clears throat> all kinds of millions and millions of dollars of grouting, where we're grouting our interceptor so that we don't have uh, another sinkhole under transmission grids. Think about that, ruining your whole day, okay? Or under the Clinton River, where we could have a uh, catastrophic environmental catastrophe. So we're trying to ensure the integrity of, uh, of all of our underground in infrastructure. We have a lot of those kinds of projects going on as well. My real passion and really one of the principal reasons I even ran for this job was because of combined sewer overflows, which has been going on for decades, uh, particularly in the older parts of, you know, our communities. And in Macomb County, that means the southern part of, uh, of Macomb County, where you have older systems, combined systems. And that after a heavy rain event, unfortunately, we have to discharge combined sewer overflows into our magnificent Great Lakes. How crazy is that? What is wrong with us? We do not have to live this way. So we are very focused on reducing and hopefully eliminating our combined sewer overflows at our major pump station at uh, Nine Mile on Jefferson. <clears throat> I 
I've got a lot of projects going on down there. And we have another retention basin, uh, which is in, uh, also in St. Clair Shores, and uh, we're doing a lot of work there. And uh, let me just say, we, we were helpful. Uh, we, we got some earmarks. We appreciate the congresswoman. Uh, we got a million dollars for our MID, the Macomb Interceptor Drainage Community. Kevin Herod is here today from Senator Peter's office, who was a champion on helping us with um, uh, the Martin retention, one of these combined sewer overflows, and Senator Stabenow. And, uh, and then uh, we've just got $72 million from our state legislature. So I've been very busy with my wheelbarrow. You're the last pot for me to get, so no, I'm not going away. I'm kidding. But we really do try to work together. We have a lot of different projects going on uh, in the public works. And, and I'll stop there because uh, you all are, can just get a copy of our report here, and it shows you everything that we've been doing, and we do this about twice a year. So you can take a look at that. But I get to introduce Frank, <clears throat> so I'm going to do that. Let me just say, Frank is going to tell you all the great and wonderful things that are happening in Macomb Township, and there is a litany. There's a list of them. It, it is amazing uh, what has happened here. But I will tell you, when Frank first came to talk to me, and Mark, I think, about he had an interest in running for this job. And having been an old township supervisor, not an old, having been a former township supervisor, write that down for Kest, a former township supervisor, he's got my job, old job now, uh, I know what it is to be a township supervisor. This, this guy came into a, a, a community that, I mean, talk about opportunity. What a beautiful, beautiful place. And yet, there were so many issues, so many challenges on the township board. There were all kinds of, you know, angst about different kinds of things. I'm not going to go into everybody's background there, but look, it was no uh, secret. I had to read the headlines of the Macomb Daily of some of the things that were happening here in Macomb Township. Uh, <clears throat> Frank said, you know, I, I really have an interest. I think I can really help there. And I thought, you know what, this guy can provide leadership. You can talk about all the issues, but you've got to have a leader. You need to have a leader. And then you have to have a leader that understands it's not just him, okay? You've got to have a team. You've got to have a team. And what he's done with Leon and Christy, I want to say they're your right hand. They're like your right left. <laughs> Leon, you're to the right, 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 of course, you know. <clears throat> but his whole board, what he's done with the entire board, and Pete and Frank and, uh, you know, everybody here. I mean, the, the department heads, the people that work there, you know, that were signing all these letters of all these terrible things that were happening. Guess what? Now everybody's sort of pulling together. And what a difference that makes. And what it means is you have public servants, okay? Not people who are in the public for their own reasons. They're here to be public servants, public service, which is an honorable calling. And so I am very proud and delighted to be here in Macomb Township with all these great folks at the, at the township board level and all of you, everybody pulling together, as Congresswoman Kling said, you know, it's a little different what's going on here right now. I mean, everybody is very focused on a goal, a vision, and uh, that starts with the top, the leadership, Frank Viviano, supervisor. Well, the least enviable place to be in politics is following Mark Hackle and Candace Miller. But, well, here I am. Uh, thank you to everybody for coming. Uh, thank you to Mr. Schwark for accommodating us. I know we're a little bit needy sometimes, so I appreciate taking my phone calls and helping us out. Oh, the microphone's already mad at me. Um, thank you to the Chamber for putting this event on. Uh, it's a great turnout. You know, last year, uh, I was really surprised at how many people actually came out and were actually interested in anything I had to say. But I sort of chalked it up. It was, you know, we were coming out of COVID, there really wasn't anything else to do, so, you know, everybody wanted a, a morning out for a change. Well, and I hate to tell, break this to you guys, but you guys don't have that excuse, and this time it's not my fault, it's yours for being here. So, um, But before I get started, I do want to bring up my colleagues who are with me day in and day out and are truly my partners on the board and partners at the township. So, uh, Leon Drillette, our treasurer, Christy Posey, our clerk, and Come up and say a few words. Thank you, Frank. If I hold this a little easier. So um, as treasurer, most people associate that with bottom line, dollars and cents. 
Uh, but before being elected treasurer about a year and a half ago, I spent a lot of time as a taxpayer rights activist, kind of campaigning against tax increases and so forth. So it was key to me that uh, the township have be really well grounded in fiscal responsibility. But what does fiscal responsibility actually mean? Well, I think to the average person, maybe to you, it means that you don't spend more than you earn or take in, and if possible, you save some money for a rainy day in case there's a recession or unexpected needs. So I tried to apply those policies to Macomb Township. But what policies should we enact in order to achieve that goal? So I looked to Washington, D.C., the policies they've enacted, and did the opposite. And, <laughs> but, oh, Congresswoman McLean's been a great advocate for fiscal responsibility. We know the history of Washington, is not always the case. Uh, but joking aside, uh, in our first year and a half, you can see that the, um, the, the red line, the upper line, is our expenses of Macomb Township, and the gray line is our revenues. So in that year and a half since we took office, we have dropped our expenses below our revenues so we can add uh, to, our, to our rainy day fund, to our fund balance, in case there is a recession or in case something happens uh, where we need that money unexpectedly. In addition, during that same period of time, we've actually lowered the tax burden on our residents and our businesses. So before we took office, the blue lines represent the tax rates uh, you know, for the various uh, services. And the orange lines represent the tax, uh, tax rates that are anticipated in, in 2022, or currently in 2022. Now, a little of that is head of the amendment rollbacks, but there's been active reductions in the rates of taxes for our police tax, our fire tax, without reducing services, without while adding you know, uh, uh, services there. And our uh, Parks and Rec Department will be proposing uh, to lower the tax rate for the Parks and Rec Department while adding services there. So the bottom line, I know charts and graphs are boring, but the bottom line is keep the burden low on our residents, keep the burden low on our citizens, and uh, have it be as fiscally responsible as we possibly can. I'm gonna hand it over to Christy. Thank you, Liam. In true character, Leon focused on tax cutting and lower tax rates. But let's be honest, people are not moving to Macomb Township just because of our low tax rate. They're moving to Macomb Township because of the low tax rate and the services and amenities that we have to offer to the residents. The three of us took a deep dive into those services and amenities and decided that we need to do some improvements because we want to offer the best quality services to our residents. So I'm excited to announce that we've committed to uh, looking into our services at the Senior Center. We're going to do some renovating on the inside and outside of that building to expand the building to allow our seniors so to- pricey. <laughs> to allow our more of our seniors to enjoy the programs that we have to offer at the Senior Center. We're also looking at our parks. We have Waldenburg Park, which uh, we have approximately 2,000 residents that frequent that park. But we've had a request for more seating, uh, shaded seating for the residents so they can enjoy some family time there. won't be free, it won't be free. Leon. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that our residents can enjoy some shaded seating, but we're going to invest in some new basketball courts, some additional playscape amenities for the children. <laughs> and then we have our premier, <laughs> we have our premier Macomb Corners Park, which is our sports Just premier our park. Just our charts to reflect all this. Leon, you've had your turn. Just relax. We're going to upgrade our, that park so that we have electronic scoreboards. We're going to improve the playscape there for the children that are stuck there all day with their families. And we're going to offer uh, basketball courts and batting cages, which has been a request of our residents. And that park has about 8,000 people that frequent there with their families. And the price tag associated with it. Leon, Christine. you've had your turn. This is can't about keep spending like this. Okay, you're about the you're about the taxes. Wait, wait, I'm about the quality on. of services. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me. All right, break it up. So we can do both, Leon and Christy. We can cut taxes. We can provide more services. You know, and you know what? We have done both. Last year, we reduced our police and fire millages. Yet we're still providing the best quality services there. In fact. This year, we're going to be adding a resource officer to one of our schools. We are going to improve our parks, and we're committed to it in this year's budget. But do you know at the same time, we're also proposing to reduce our parks millage. So and how? Because the three of us, we talk about our issues, we talk about the budget, we talk about sound fiscal planning. And when we can, we trim our spending. 
And when we have to, we invest wisely, and we make sure our tax dollars go as far as possible. So yes, we can do both, and we're going to be just fine. <laughs> so. Um. So, I know it's hard to believe, but after a year and a half of working together, we actually still get along. Um, I mean, how many people that have worked with Leon Drillette for a year and a half can say that? <laughs> but in all seriousness, seriousness, Leon is an earnest public servant, and he does live his convictions every day. For that, I appreciate him. Christy is a brilliant clerk. And to be honest, trying to keep up with her has made me a better supervisor. It's also exhausting. <laughs> but the residents are lucky to have them both, and so am I. So I appreciate it. Thank you both. You know, the three of us working together seems to be a bit of a, uh, a unique situation in politics today. I mean, if all you did was watch the national media, you think that every disagreement should result in a no-holds-barred fight. lucky we couldn't get a hold of certain footage. <laughs> so, I mean, to the elected officials in this room, if any of you think you recognize a little piece of your meetings, you might want to think about a different approach. Chris? Why do you Oakland County guys have to sit at your own table? Just, it's okay, we're, we're nice on this side of town. You know, it's not enough anymore just to use facts and logic, you know, to win, to win a debate and to make your point. No, instead, the national media would have us believe that we have to tear each other down. They literally have to drag the other person down into the mud in order to win. Well, last year, I stood up here and I promised that our board would be different, that we would work together, that when we did disagree, we would do so respectfully. So... My hope was that Macomb Township would become the model for what good government looks like. I want to check back in and see how I've done on that pledge, but I've got to warn you, there was an unforeseen uh, consequence of that. As a request outside the supervisor to work with Township Attorney to negotiate and sign a purchase agreement for the eastern portion of parcel ID numbers 20. 0817-402-0005 and 2008-17-426-003. Uh, these are commonly known as the former Wade Nursery for $160,000. If there's any questions, discussion? Okay, hearing none. Clerk Posey, will you please call the roll? Clerk Posey, will you please call the roll? Clerk Posey, yes. Treasurer Gillette? Yep. Trustee Lucido? Trustee Lucido? Here. I'm going to give you some coffee, Trustee Lucido. Oh, thank you. <laughs> there you go. Well, you know, as you can see, things may maybe have gotten a little boring. And you know, it's been a long year. I've learned a lot um, in my really my first full year. And I did learn that apparently, what good government looks like, it does tend to look a little boring. And I and I think I've come to be okay with that. Um, you know, all of the negative stuff, all of the 
the, the infighting and the, you know, the drama that might make for great clickbait on, you know, on the internet, but it just sucks the air out of the room and it's not productive. All of that time and energy is much better used to put towards something that the residents can actually value. So if I have to choose between being exciting in that way and being boring, I think I'm going to just stick to being boring. You know, so while we're taking a look back, I want to look ba also look back on some stuff we talked about in last year's State of the Township. Uh, we talked about certain headlines that we had hoped to see, some things that we had sort of uh, predicted would be coming up in, the, in this past year. So let's take a quick look back and see how we did on those. Oh yeah, we have our, we were opening our public safety building in our new library. And there's our public library. It's a beautiful building and they did a great job on the public safety building. I mean, those two things are, are great additions to our township and they're gonna be great anchor points in our community for many generations. We had some road improvement stuff that we wanted to work on. Uh, one of them was our roundabout a 25 mile road. Um, let's see how we did there. Yep, that's got done. Uh, it's been a great addition to relieve that, that uh, congestion on that corner and is much safer. And I, I got to happily to report that Trustee Nevers only got lost there twice. So <laughs> I consider that a huge success. Um, then the Garfield Road. Oh yeah, Garfield Road. We're pretty excited about our Garfield Road project. It's going to be a main artery heading north and south. And, you know, we're, we should be pretty close to getting that open. And, all right, well, that's, that's not quite drivable yet, but all right, let's, let's move on from there. Oh, our Pitchford Park. We talked a lot about the generous donation that the Pitchford family made to our park. We spent a lot of time getting that ready for this year. And then we got, we were very excited. We got our future home of Pitchford Park. Sorry, that's, that's still just a field. All right, well, that didn't quite work out. In my, in my defense, last year when I did this, I was still pretty new. Yeah, that's me from last year. Look, I'm, I'm still kind of shiny. I got, well, you know, I, I was suffering from the freshman supervisor excitement, I guess. Um, I had a lot to learn. You know, I learned, like I said, government looks boring, and it's also kind of slow. But we did get to rebranding. We talked about that last year. There's our new logo. You start to see that pop up around town. There it is on the public safety building. It looks great, lit up at night. And there it is at our, we added it to our boardroom. And, well, we haven't, that's our DPW building. We haven't done that one yet, but let's, and our news, no, that's not new yet. Let's jump, no, okay, that's not quite done yet. All right, so some of the things are still taking time, but, you know, I did get my business card done, so that was good. <laughs> so, happy with that. You know, it would be nice to get a lot of that more exciting stuff done. Um, maybe GM has another $4 billion they could drop on another township nearby. Um, but for now, what I, another thing that I've learned is what we really excel at, where we really shine, is the boring stuff. The boring government stuff. So when I got prepared for this, I listed out all the things that I thought we had accomplished in the last year. And I showed the list to Leon and Christy, and I said, what do you guys think of this list? And they sort of reacted like you saw in that video. So I said, all right, I promise, I promise this won't be a complete snoozer. I won't embarrass you. So instead, I had some, I invited some friends to help me out with the presentation. gentlemen, the Dakota High School Drumline. Wow, this is exciting government now. <laughs> so one of the first things I did was I reorganized our staff. So we took three of our departments, engineering, uh, planning, building. We organized them under uh, our land development director and Mr. Jim Van Tiflin has assumed that role to keep those three intertwined departments moving smoothly. We took our maintenance department and our 
um, water department and took those two overlapping, we added them to, we created a DPW department under Kevin Johnson, a new addition to our staff. And we created the role of township CFO so that we could have our you know, chief financial officer to be more heavily involved in the planning and execution of not just the general budget, but all the budgets throughout the township. So by resetting this structure in our organization, um, we're prepared now to meet the growing needs of our community for not just the next few years, but for the next 20 or 30 years to come. I also hired a couple of new people. So joining my executive team this year was Jody Claycomb, who brings almost 20 years of municipal experience to, to the role of deputy supervisor. And we added Anne Marie Chamberlain, who is going to help us flush out the new role of community relations li liaison. And we're excited to learn what we can do with someone helping us uh, talk to and hear the needs of the residents. We changed some policies and procedures. So what we actually did is we streamlined um, our procedure for new developments. We actually eliminated 16 steps out of the process. That's a 38% reduction, saving months of time, both township time from the staff that has to be committed to those um, reviews and from the development side. And what does that do for us? Well, it saves us money. And it encourages development in our community from the outside and helps us retain those businesses that are growing inside the community. And all of it without sacrificing any quality. We also put in place a first-of-its-kind residential road policy. This, this policy allows the township to partner with the residents so that we can match the up to $1.5 million that the county makes available for any one residential road project. So this means if the county approves our project annually, that we will be able to spend $1 million each year in road replacement in our neighborhoods. So we are making a little bit more space for elections. So after 2020, we learned that the logistics of running an election had become very difficult. In fact, we just didn't have enough space to really pull it off. So we thought about what to do. We talked a lot about it. We talked about putting in a new building, we talked about adding a wing to one of the existing buildings. All the solutions we could think of at the time were costing millions and millions of dollars. And as we contemplated the problem, we realized that the solution was right under our feet. So in true McCone Township, where we do more with less, we cleared out the storage in our basement, and we are, as we speak, have contractors there now creating an election center for the township. We did adopt a new master plan this year. So the master plan hadn't been reworked since 2008. And Josh Box and his team did a fantastic job creating a new vision for our future. This is a tool that's going to help us stay on the path to long-term long success. And with this being done, we're going to be working on our five-year parks plan next. Speaking of the parks, we are going to do a little bit of maintenance this year, like we talked about earlier. We're not just doing some maintenance, but in this year's budget, we are proposing to commit $1 million to the improvement of our parks. And what allowed us to do that? Well, a lot of boring financial decisions. Things like refinancing bonds, where we saved hundreds of thousands of dollars, bidding out certain services, and even something as mundane as managing our fleet differently. All netted us some savings so that we could make this investment back into our community. We are still building Pitchford Park. So while the engineering work is still underway, and we were hoping to break ground, we weren't completely at a standstill. So what we've been doing in the background is converting all of our unused property inventory into cash. As you can see here, so far we've netted $1.73 million that we are earmarked specifically for the development of Pitchford Park. And as we speak, our broker is gathering um, bids for one more property that's on the market now. And so far we have multiple bids over a million dollars. So with the closing of all of those sales, 
we will have over $2.73 million for the development of Pitchford Park, which means, in effect, we have paid for our park 100% by simply converting unused assets. So what else? Oh, the census came out. It's exciting. And if you look at the numbers, apparently there's a lot of people that like boring government. Because for the second census in a row, Macomb Township is the fastest growing community in the state of Michigan, adding over 12,000 residents. That makes for the last 40 years, I'm sorry, the last 20 years, we have added over 40,000 residents in just 20 years. Now, Money Magazine must appreciate boring, too, because they named Macomb Township as one of the 50 best places to live in the United States. Our housing starts remain strong, and we have plenty of room and opportunity to grow both residences and businesses. Now, these kind of things may not be super exciting to a lot of people, but to me, they're music to my ears. making a spot for these guys at all board meetings. <laughs> you know, from the outside looking in, you know, I can understand why some people might think local government's a little boring. I mean, if I was the average person and I walked into my lobby and I just looked through all the windows, I would probably just think I'm looking at a bunch of clerks pushing paper around. But to the residents that we serve, those simple functions, those are pretty important. To the 18-year-old that just left the clerk's office who just registered to vote, that's a, that's a life moment for that person. You know, that, that kid might be up here in a few years giving this speech. To that young couple that's over at the assessor's office filling out some property transfer paperwork, that represents five years of hard-earned savings. And that's their first house. That's a milestone in their life. Take something as simple as a rezoning request. You know, we're a growing community, we get them all the time. But to that farming family that's been on that property for generations, that's an opportunity to join in retirement that we, they otherwise may have never had, and a chance to leave something to their children and their grandchildren. To the next owner of that property who starts moving dirt around, that represents thousands of new jobs, and those jobs represent additional opportunity and additional chances for success. And they might be putting up locations for more businesses to occupy, which will in turn create more opportunity and generate more success. Or they might be putting up homes. They might even be putting up the home for that young couple who had been saving for five years, because it might be their first house. Yeah, boring government may not always make headlines. You know, but boring can be beautiful in its own way. Because it means we're putting the focus where it should be. Not on ourselves, but on the residents represent, as Candace so aptly put. Now take that one step a little bit further. To be good at this job, you probably need to be a little bit boring. You probably should avoid the spotlight and let the people around you shine. Yeah, I might step up to the microphone on days like this or in front of a news camera and speak with the voice that the people elected me to be. That's part of this job. But for us to be successful, they have to be successful. Our staff, the ones that do all the hard, boring work. Sometimes that means I have to step back and play a supporting role. Because that's what leaders are supposed to do. That's how the boring work gets done and how it gets done well. And when the boring work gets done well, then those of us who get to step up to these microphones have more opportunities to provide for our residents and improve their quality of life. 
Well, what's all of this have to do with the state of our township? Well, everything, really. You've got to remember where, where you are and where we've come from. You know, meetings in Macomb Township used to look a lot more like that first video than they do the second. Four or five years ago, all everyone wanted to do was talk about those negative headlines. And those were the result of people putting themselves first and not their community. Two years ago, it was frivolous lawsuits and infighting that was sucking the air out of the room. But 18 months ago, Leon and Christy and I, along with trustees Lucido, Guzmano, Oliver, and Nevers, came together as a board for the very first time. And with a shared commitment to always put the residents first, we got down to doing the work of the township. No games, no ego, no preening, just work. And think about those census numbers. 40,000 people in 20 years. 40,000. We're not a small community anymore. We're a big community with big community issues. So it's no wonder that we spent some time focused on our organization. It's probably long overdue. You know, at the end of the day, I'm still proud of the boring work that we've done. We've established our foundation based on deep-rooted principles, and we can build on that for many years to come. So the state of our township, I am proud to say, is as strong as it's ever been. And our outlook is amazing. So stay tuned, because it's about to get a lot more boring. And to me, that's pretty exciting. Thank you. And let's hear it from our drum line one more time. Um, and I wanted to take a second because I think I can speak for everyone in this room. Congratulations to you, supervisor, and your team, and all the incredible things that are happening. You say they're boring, but as a local resident and Macomb County lifelonger, seeing the wonderful work happen and unfold in front of us is actually quite exciting. Congratulations. Congratulations. 